hello everybody welcome back to the channel in today's tutorial well not really a tutorial a quick demonstration I'm gonna go over how to quickly and easily edit the many many templates I have across the channel now more frequently now than ever before I've seen lots of people trying to sell templates my template specifically on sites like Fiverr where they make just simple edits to change up the font change up the color and they're selling for five or ten dollars a banner and I just think that's pretty silly especially with how many free resources are out there for you to edit these banners and really make them your own and fit your community so today I figured I would go over in Photoshop how to quickly edit each of these banners to swap colors text etc and I'm going to have another video linked below to where I do something similar with GIMP GIMP is a free alternative Photoshop. It offers many of the same features, not as well honed or formatted as in Photoshop, but it's free and it's really hard to beat that. So without further delay, I'm gonna jump right into it. So this first one I have up right here is one of the more recent tutorials on the channel. And we just have rules and a really simple pink and purple. Now to start out, a quick little tip, if you go over to the move tool and you click auto select, you can then quickly go to any of the layers that you click on without having to find it in all of the folders. So let's say I wanna edit the pink, I can quickly click the pink and it brought me right to it. Just make sure you unselect auto select, otherwise if you go to move stuff in the future, it can become really obnoxious really quickly which I have found out many times I have auto select left on and then I get very frustrated as to why everything is getting screwed up anyway now we're on the cloud layer we can right click go to blending options color overlay now let's say let's make it blue so we can hit ok then let's right click and rash our layer style or leave it it doesn't really matter because that's the only effect on a layer, nothing is being clipped onto it, so the color overlay isn't going to affect anything else. Now I'm going to hold I, that's the eyedropper tool, click the blue, now I have the color code of the blue, or we could have just grabbed it when we were doing the color overlay. Now I'm going to go to the pink frame, I'm not going to use the auto select, because, let's see, I forgot to unselect it, that could have been messy. I'm not going to use that because it's right there, no need to. Now I'm going to go over to Fill, which is under Properties. And if you don't see Properties, and really at this point you should have the Properties tab right on the right side of your Photoshop if you've seen any of my other videos because I always mention to do so in those tutorials. Go over to Window, go under Properties and make sure that is checked. And once you do so, it will pop up here on the right side for you to use. So click the fill and now we have that blue and all of that is now a nice blue color. And then this is not actually pink. I'm not sure why I named that. That's probably just being lazy. Let's make this one a nice shade of orange, I guess. So we have that orange. I'm going to hold the eye, click it, and then we'll go back to auto select because I don't know where this purple back here is. I'll click it brought me right to it go to fill that one is good now this one as well click and fill and now we quickly swapped all the colors this is really a five second job it's just taking so long because I'm explaining every step of the process now rules you can easily change that to welcome though of course the size is gonna have to change a bit because it's going well out of frame or just info that also works and the icon is much the same because the drop shadow effect is on the actual grouped folder. We can easily swap in another icon by deleting this and bringing another one in and still having that same drop shadow effect. Now, however, if that drop shadow was on a specific layer, like here, we can right click, copy layer style, create a new layer. Let's say we're gonna draw another box we draw one right there, then we can right click and paste that same layer style with the same effects we had on the layer below it. As you can see, this now has the inner shadow that that text section had itself. And another quick tip, I always forget to mention it, but I'm holding Alt and scrolling over the mouse to quickly zoom in and out. 
I always forget to mention in the video is because I'm so used to just using that shortcut. Now I'm going to X out of that and go on to another one. So this is another one that's a bit more complicated, but it follows the same premise and once you get it down, it should take you no more than maybe 5 minutes at the very most to edit these 2 minutes when you're a bit more familiar with it. Now the first thing I'm going to change is this main area. I'm going to pop it up and this is the current image that we have. As you can see, a nice little rustic town. Now I'm going to do Control V and paste in a new image. As you can see, there it is. It's a bit too large for me, so I'm going to do Control T to open free transform. If that doesn't work for you, go over to Edit, Free Transform, and that will have the same effect. Now I'm going to drag that down to where I like it. That looks pretty decent to me. Now I'm going to go to a Filter, Blur Gallery, and Field Blur. I think this is what I did when I originally made this banner. It's been so many months since then. And I think maybe 4 pixels will do it. And now that is swapped out. Let's make sure we get this right side over here as well. In this specific case, I'm going to skip it. But just keep in mind you swap out all parts of the template when you do so. Now all select, I'm going to get the flag. And now since we were being smart and we made the flag, nope, nope, never mind, I was wrong. The flag I thought was just still shaped up so we can easily swap them properties, that's not the case. So instead we're going to do something else. Right click, copy layer style, right click, clear layer style. Now we just have this nice blue. If you're wondering what that nonsense on top of it is, that's the texture. And we hide it and it goes back to that blue color. Now we can right click on the base, blending options, color overlay. Let's say we want purple. I wouldn't use that purple myself, but to each their own. Now we can right click rasterize that color, essentially bake it into it. And right click, paste layer style. Make sure the texture is showing and it is just like it was before. In this case, this purple is too strong, so the texture is not showing up well. So when you're doing this sort of thing, just keep that in mind. And the same goes with that pattern. You can faintly see it. As you can see on this one, there's a pattern going all the way across it. But because this purple is so bright, it overpowers any of the other colors there. So that's something to keep in mind. Along with the stroke, in this case, I used a stroke lighter than the inside color. Just make sure to go right click blending options and edit any of the existing settings as necessary. And then just as I was saying before, this is the video for GIMP. I go over this process Do of in. making or editing a template in GIMP. There we go. And the video is going to be linked below for you to do so. And another question people have been asking a lot is where is the template for the video? Well, click show more and it's right there between two different sections or two little dividers. Plain and simple to see, just click download link and it will pop up right over here for you to download and you can do so right there. So that really marks the ends for this video. I hope you found it helpful, didn't find me too boring, and you won't be making any silly purchases by buying a template from somebody else when the template is already free on my channel and it takes at most a couple minutes to edit. I hope you all have an awesome day.